cutting-edge science and research across Europe now in Futuris. I think the worst thing is um, lack of a partnership. That whereas before we made decisions together, now I have to do all of that. And you don't have the companion that you had for all those years. About three years ago, Sylvia's 79-year-old husband, Peter, began showing signs of memory loss. A former design engineer with a zest for life, he designed and built many projects at home. He was also an enthusiastic member of the scouting movement. But then he lost his drive and gradually his ability to cope on his own. Eventually, he came to Rice, the Research Institute for the Care of the Elderly in Bath, southwest England, where he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease. He does not remember his children at all, or his grandchildren, or his brother and sister. He welcomes them into the house because they're friendly to him and he likes to see them, but he does not remember them. Peter is now part of a trial testing new drugs to relieve the symptoms of Alzheimer's disease. It's one of many research strands being conducted in Europe which are trying to further the understanding of age-related diseases and relieve the burden on patients and their carers. As the disease progresses, people become more dependent. People need more support. Uh, often people develop problems with behaviour. They may become agitated. They may become anxious. They may not sleep so well. And eventually this is a, such a stress that the caregiver, the family caregiver, needs support from outside. Alzheimer's disease was once thought to be a natural consequence of ageing and was comparatively rare, but now it's causing concern among medical authorities around the world. The disease mostly affects those over 65 and risk factors increase as people age. Estimates put the number of sufferers worldwide at around 26 million. But as the world's population ages, it's been estimated that by 2050 this number will have increased four times. At the Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Professor Bengit Vinblad is the director of the Alzheimer's Disease Research Centre. The disease process usually starts in these more yellow-coloured parts, we call them the temporal lobe. And here in the bottom you have a structure that is called hippocampus. And then the pathology spreads up to the parietal lobe, the more blue colour on the brain and then moves all over the cortical parts. And of course this also relates to the clinical symptoms. Here you have much of the memory function. Here you have much of the language capacity. So, I mean, the memory is affected, the language is affected a bit later in the disease process. The pathological symptoms of Alzheimer's disease are easily recognizable in samples of brain tissue. The dark flecks are known as plaques and tangles. A close-up of a plaque shows the accumulation of a protein called beta amyloid which packs around neurons blocking their signals. These are tangled nerve endings typical of the disease. Compare those with a section of healthy brain tissue from a patient of similar age. Today we know so much more than we knew 20 years ago. 20 years ago we had no drug treatment, the care was not optimal, we had no drugs on the market. Today we have the first generation of drugs. We know that this beta amyloid formation is important and the care is much better. Following the death of her father from Alzheimer's disease, Barbara Farlan has come to the research centre to have herself tested. Although only 62, she felt her mind was failing. In fact, tests of her memory and grasp of spatial relationships showed that she did not have the disease. She will return in 18 months. I just wanted to check out if it's just ordinary, you know, stress and you have lots of things to think about and you only take in what you think is important and you forget the, uh, the less important stuff. But I thought I started to forget appointments and when I walked upstairs with, to get a cup of coffee and I came upstairs and I said, what am I doing here? What was it I was going to do? And sometimes I forget and I have to walk downstairs again and start from the beginning. <laughs> Testing involving memory quizzes is the first step in establishing a diagnosis. Early diagnosis is important to establish whether there may be other causes of cognitive impairment. 
we are doing many memory tests so, so that we can really see if there is some memory problems. And then we have today some technical tools we can use to support our, our diagnosis. We are often doing MRI, neuroimaging, so that we can see how the brain structure is. Magnetic resonance imaging, or MRI, has proven itself to be an invaluable diagnostic tool for doctors researching Alzheimer's disease as well as many other conditions. By placing the patient in a powerful magnetic field, 3D images can be obtained of the tissue being investigated. MRI scans clearly show what is happening in the brain. The scan on the left shows atrophy and shrinkage typical of advanced Alzheimer's disease, while the brain on the right is normal. But while researchers race to find a treatment, is there anything we can do to protect ourselves? Now we know that there are many lifestyle-related factors like uh, uh, physical activity, active lifestyle in general, mental training, social activities that can also uh, protect against Alzheimer's disease. Also, vascular factors like high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, obesity, all these are factors that increase the risk of Alzheimer's disease. So uh, take care of all these kind of risk factors. Everything, uh, all what is good for the heart is also good for the brain. Europe's population is getting older. The number of over 65s is anticipated to rise from around 15% of the EU population to just over 22% by 2025. That means that the incidence of Alzheimer's disease is also going to rise, putting a burden on patients, carers and medical resources. In the end he was thin like a little bird in his wheelchair. I mean it was really... I really had to force myself to go and visit him because I... I it broke my heart to see him like this, really. If we don't find a cure or a treatment for Alzheimer's disease, I'm afraid that our many healthcare systems will collapse under this pressure. You adapt, but um, it has its downsides, yes lack of freedom and taking a very long time to explain any small thing for him to do.